Feral off cooldown. Dark Soul off cooldown. All right, time for some Destro Lock Madness, baby. Yeah! <laughs> Uh, all right, cooldowns are gone. Uh, okay, time for some coffee. Bonsai. Welcome to Destruction Warlock, ladies and gentlemen. So sit tight, keep watching, because in today's video, you will get the talents, gear, essences, rotation, and a lot more for you to start raiding and dungeoning ASAP. The guide will cover all the basics you need to pick up the class and it should serve you well in high-end content. However, there is much more to all specs in the game, so keep that in mind as we go forward. The talents are pretty cookie cutter for both raiding and dungeons, which is okay for some and maybe bland for others. Either way, here we go. On the first row, take Flash Over. The talent will give you two charges of backdraft instead of one, while Conflagrate will also deal more damage as well. Having a faster cast speed is not only better for your damage, but also makes it easier to move in between casts without having to cancel any of them, which also helps your damage. Not to mention that with the build you'll be getting, you'll have windows of intense Chaos Bolts casting and making all of them go out way faster is ideal. And yes, with the talent you should be able to cast all of your Chaos Bolts with a backdraft buff. Next up is Reverse Entropy on the second row. This pretty much addresses the same issues as Flashover, Haste. Destruction is very reliant on hard casts, meaning casts you need to sit through and take long enough where you might encounter a mechanic that will force you to stop casting. Not to mention that 15% haste is no joke. Seeing as how Destro has one build for everything, assume that the talents I will be recommending have been simmed and tested by the Warlock community to be the best performing options on their respective rows, essentially providing the best DPS output. Next up, the utility row that invalidates what I just said. Well, not really. Utility is meant to provide survivability and minimal DPS loss when having to deal with a raid or dungeon mechanic. In raids, the most usage you'll get out of this row is with Burning Rush. This gives you a sprint that eats away at your HP the longer you keep it on, meaning you can keep it on quite a bit, but you cannot kill yourself with it. So, sorry Destros wanted to prove something to their group. Raids usually have longer distances that need to be traversed and this baby serves that purpose well. On the other hand, dungeons are a bit more compact and even if Burning Rush can work and does work there, you can opt for Demon Skin instead. There's a lot more unavoidable damage in dungeons and this talent gives you increased survivability that compensates your lack of mobility. Fourth row is the so-called AoE row, with Cataclysm the best and uh, only option. Past expansions you might have chosen otherwise, but not in BFA, aka Cookie Cutter x pack for Warlocks. Cataclysm is pretty straightforward, big damage that applies Immolate in an area. With the cooldown of the spell, you will be able to refresh your Immolate every other cast, not to mention that in AoE it's a fair bit of damage. Fifth row is yet another utility row. Demonic Circle will prove more useful in raids since the fights will be more predictable. Not to mention that the other options will barely do anything in raid because class design? In dungeons, however, you can replace it with Mortal Coil, which also cleaves from havoc. Mortal Coil is a forced instant fear that will most likely serve to CC targets, break their channel or cast, or simply peel them off of your tank to buy time so your group won't die. It has a heal component which I don't recommend relying on unless absolutely necessary since most tanks will not be ready for out of the blue Mortal Coils. Had it happened to me, <laughs> kek. Sixth row gives you Grimoire of Sacrifice, buffing your infernal cooldown and making it almost mandatory to be paired with other cooldowns and played in a specific way. It's probably the main reason Destro is played in high-end content, which is a big shame because it adds a shitty concept where you hit like a wet noodle outside cooldowns. But when the stars align... Boom! 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 
Man, Chaos Bolts are just too good during cooldowns. Lastly, for the 7th tier, you will get Dark Soul, a 2-minute cooldown increasing your critical strike by 30% for 20 seconds. Depending on the length of the fight, you will either want to pair this up with Infernal or cast it on cooldown. This is situational and it matters once you get a better grasp of your spec. The build will focus on you being a powerhouse during cooldowns and hitting those Chaos Bolts is satisfying as fuck. Almost as satisfying as hitting that notification bell thingy, yes! Hey, I know you're probably subscribed and if you don't mind this and Marcellian's ugly mug in your feed slash inbox, hit that little bell thingy because it really helps us out a lot. Thank you. As always, if you want to be 100% accurate with any choice you make in terms of gear, sim your warlock on raidbots.com. We are getting a lot of comments from people either asking about stats or simply offering to correct a specific stat priority we put in the videos. It's not that we don't like explaining in the comments what we already said in the video, but this is just how BFA is. We will give you something to base your progression on, but nothing anybody says will ever be 100% true for everybody. So, Sim... With that being said, the general step priority sees haste on top, followed by crit and versatility. It's difficult to say where eye level features into all of this, so if you're not simming your character, just pick eye level above all else. As an example, this is how my stats are simming, and as you can see, they are pretty different from the norm. It's a shitty game design, and we all know it. Heck, even the devs know it. Hopefully in the next expansion, they will make it so we won't have to sim those five different rings with five different stats and five different eye levels, of which none of that is a straightforward criteria to follow. Once you do get a decent amount of eye level, versatility will start to become better and better, as seen from my own personal sims. When it comes to trinkets, you can use your highest eye level or the ones that match your best stats. And on top of that, we will even give you a few of the best in slot. How about that? Jara's Font of Power is a DPS powerhouse. The passive crit is already good for you, but the thousands of intellect you get from a full channel is crazy. Keep in mind, you always want to precast this before the pool. The other best in slot is the Leviathan's Lure from the second raid boss. And to be fair, this raid has been a very good raid for trinkets for all DPS specs in the game. And even if you are mainly pushing keys, it would still be worth it for you to get at least one of these trinkets. Or you can aim for options like Ignition Mage's Fuse from Toldegore, a simple stat stick with a decent haste buff proc that can never fail you. As right traits give a bit of a wiggle room, which is a nice change of pace to be honest. When raiding, you want Crashing Chaos once. The damage is nice, but it doesn't stack well. One of it will be your single most powerful trait, which seems to have diminishing returns when stacked, at least compared to other options. Other options, like Loyal to the End, Bursting Flare and Chaotic Inferno are very good options to stack, ideally in this order. Loyal to the End will only be worth it if you have four other allies using it in your group, as for the other two, try to get at least one of each before stacking them, because they're just good. They add some nice bonuses and effects that can spice up your rotation. In dungeons, you want flash points, stacked two or three times, same as Roiling Havoc. These two are almost a must when pushing keys, while the rest of the slots can be filled by any of the raid traits I mentioned earlier. Inner traits will favor mostly overwhelming power and unstable flames as the strongest, with other generic stat traits following closely after. The defensive see resounding protection outperforming pretty much anything else in the game, for Destro Warlocks at least. For the essences, there are actually two very dominant builds running in both mythic rating and 20 plus keys. The builds assume you have the essences at rank 3 however, if you don't, use the highest ones you have. In Raid, you want to get Memory of Lucid Dreams in your Major. 
it pairs up really, really nicely with your cooldown window and it's what we will base your rotation around. Miners can be focusing Iris and Vision of Perfection. The Infernal cooldown has a hard time lining up with everything else and Vision helps with that a bit. In dungeons, you kind of flip all of these around. Vision will be your major with Memory of Lucid Dreams and Purification Protocol or other similar essences as your miners. Some people do not like the inconsistency of Vision as a major essence. However, in the long run, it will perform the best. Plus, there is a reason top performing Destros use it almost always. When you open in single target, you want to pre-pot and pre-cast Ajara Trinkets if you have them. Pre-cast an Incinerate followed by Cataclysm. Summon your Infernal and use Conflagrate twice. Cast Chaos Bolt twice, Conflagrate again, then Chaos Bolt again. After this, you pool resources until your Infernal has about 18 seconds left. Pop Trinkets and Racials together with Dark Soul and Memory of Lucid Dreams. Go absolutely nuts with Chaos Bolt and wonder why this spec is not being played always like this because god damn it Ian, you are such a tease. You'll need to practice the timing of all of these but the opener is pretty cookie cutter. Because of how Grimoire of Supremacy works, not to mention you having the crashing Chaos trait, your hardest hitting Chaos Bolt will be in the last seconds of your Infernal and that's when you want to pair everything up. Memory of Lucid Dreams will give you a crazy amount of refunded shards that come back a bit inconsistently, so be ready for that. As a general rule, I found that in the last seconds of Infernal, I only casted Chaos Bolts and Conflagrates. In single target, you want to keep Immolate up at all times, and make sure to use Chaos Bolts to prevent you from capping on shards. Cataclysm should be used on cooldown, and if you don't fuck it up, it should refresh your every other Immolate. Use Conflagrate when you have two charges of it, use Conflagrate to generate shards when needed, and fill in with Incinerates to generate more shards. That's it. A bit boring, I know, but Destro had these rotation issues for a long time and the community is hoping for the day when this can be changed. Until then, have <laughs> fun. Immolate is again the most important to be kept up on your priority target. Use Havoc every time and with Chaos Bolts only when fighting less than 5 targets. If Havoc is on cooldown or you have more than 5 enemies, just cast Rain of Fire. Consume the shards with Chaos Bolts instead if the before does not apply. Use Conflagrate to generate shards and fill in with Incinerate. Your Havoc windows are what makes you one of the strongest cleave specs in the game and also what gives you the strength to clear keys in the low 20s range. Mastering Havoc is a must and you can do it even better by cleaving Conflagrates with Havoc to spam your shards on Rain of Fire in very large packs. The exact math on when to Rain of Fire or Chaos Bolts differs with your gear and your encounter, but what I just mentioned has been theorycrafted pretty well by the Warlock community. But maybe you like a different community. How about our stream community? Oh yeah, that's actually a thing, right? Listen, we have some amazing people on our stream and we play with them mythic dungeons and raids, both on EU and NA. So if you want to hop on and join us, feel free to check us on twitch.tv slash line. We stream four days a week. The safest way to get consumables is to get them orientated towards haste. If your stat distribution skews harder in a different direction, feel free to make the appropriate adjustments to what we are about to recommend. Your ring enchants will be a cord of haste by default and your socket will be the quick sand spinel. It's difficult to say how good the intellect gem will be for you. Of course, it's less difficult if you sim it, hey! The weapon, however, is usually best to be with the Machinus Brilliance Enchant. It procs with intellect and your highest secondary stat. Overall, this will be your best bet and you don't have to worry about replacing it every time your stats change. For your alchemy consumables, Deep Intellect Flask is a no-brainer. The potion, however, is Unbridled Fury Potion in pure single target situations or Superior Battle Potion of Intellect when you will predominantly cleave or hit multiple targets. 
When eating, feast will always be decent, since the raw amount of intellect you get is way higher than the normal staff food. But I know not everyone can afford to have feast every time, so baked potatoes will work just as well. A major shout out to the Black Harvest Discord community where all the top warlocks pull in their information and make all of this possible because a lot of the information that we got on our guide was based off of that so I highly recommend you check that out because there's a lot more advanced stuff that we didn't cover because we mostly want to keep our guide simple and easy and fast to pick up. Shout out to you guys Black Harvest community, you're the real MVPs and also another and possibly better mvps are our patreons guys you're supporting us every month and we couldn't be more grateful i mean honestly it really means a lot to us because let's be honest youtube revenue is not that consistent and not that reliable so having you guys there makes me sleep better at night and i know marcelin doesn't cry himself to sleep as much anymore and i can say that because he's not here and he's probably not gonna edit this out <laughs> But, you know, our Dish Warlock is not the only class guide that we have up. We have a larger playlist with pretty much all, not, not, not all the specs yet, but maybe there's one for you there. So check it out. Thank you for watching the video. Have a good one and see you next time.